When you did that with uh, Chris Brown, when you when you did the song with him. Like uh, and and just being in the in the in the vicinity, the star power was there. You know what I'm saying? Not the Chris he is today, of course, mm -hmm. but it was still star power there. For and, sure. And you guys, you guys made a great song. But I mean, do you? What do you think about Chris today? Like where he's at now? I'm proud of him. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Man, I've been doing music for so long, and I feel like I just done conquered so many aspects of not as far as the success level I want to reach, but the experience level and the, my passion is just depreciating for it because of the, the, the way the game is right now. It's cool. I love music. It's my therapy. And, I, and can't none of these niggas fuck with me, so let's get that understood. You niggas can't fuck with me. Let's get that out of here. I'll fuck you up, boy. Period. But... With this, with this entertainment, I just really I'm trying to show my diversity. Trying to show them that like it's more than one. It's a thousand ways skin to care. You can't stop me in no way. You know what I'm saying? I agree. But you know, there's politics in Men, entertain. There's politics entertainment. in entertainment. Period. Okay. Well, look, I fuck too many rappers, girls, so they won't let me in. So guess what? I ain't fucked that many actors, girls. So I'm finna try this way. Y'all fuck okay. with me. We are gonna try it over. I ain't even fucking nobody, girls, no more. I've been chilling now, so y'all ain't gotta worry about me. I ain't your baby mom, baby daddy no more. I'm finna revamp myself. Don't worry about it. I ain't got the blood. Don't be scared. <laughs> I'm not gonna come lay dick on you, bitch. I swear to God, that's boss talk. <laughs> Man, that's great. But you know, I, I when I when I look at look, I see you across here. People don't realize, man, you got so many uh different elements to you. When I do talk about just the music and just the the um just the way that <coughs> that, that you came into the game and coming from a, a small town, you know what I'm saying? People look at Fort Worth back. You know, it's not like the it's not New York. Yeah. But 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 at the end of the day, you was able to come up out of this thing and blossom to where people see you from everywhere, bro. People know you from everywhere. Correct. And that's hard, bro. Yeah. Like like and you did in a time when it really was a time where it wasn't a lot of social media like, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a hard grind. Work. That, had, <laughs> that was footwork. Yeah, you talking about Boomtown and everybody Come here on, like, man. I'm just giving, this an interview, nigga. Come you on, man. So I know that. These like, folks I'm got like, to the door in a Tesla. I came on Come Pete on, and man. Pat. You was, you were trying I was to pull on Pete up. and Pat. Hey, what we doing? Come on, man. Let me hold a camera. I was selling CD hand to hand. See what I'm mm. saying? And that's what make you different because that you got to respect that grind. Yeah. You really know what it, and then you was able to bridge the gap with social media as well. Correct. And with television. You, you've been doing a lot, man. Man, I ain't going to lie, man. That was one of the hardest transitions because it wasn't hard because it was hard. It was hard because I was jealous. Yeah. I was like, why the fuck? I didn't have this opportunity because I know my character. If if me as an 18 year old, 16, 17 year old solo Lucci had Instagram, <laughs> let me tell you what. It would have been crazy. Man, I would have been viral. Crazy, and crazy. It, and it's like, it's cool, you know, everything happened for a reason. God, you know, God planned, it, it, everything happened for a reason. So I appreciate everything that happened, that, you know, that I went through. Cause it made me who I am. When you did that with uh, Chris Brown, when you when you did the song with him, like uh, and and just being in the in the in the vicinity, the star power was there. You know what I'm saying? Not the Chris he is today, of course. Mm -hmm. But it was still star power there. For and, sure. And you guys you guys made a great song. But, I mean, do you, what do you think about Chris today? Like, where he's at now? I'm proud of him. I'm very proud of Chris because what a lot of people fail to realize and forget about artists and entertainers is that we're human beings. You know what I'm saying? We go through a lot. And, uh, like, you know, I want to touch on something that I heard you talking about earlier. And I ain't going to go too deep because it's serious shit, but mental health, right? Yeah. So it's like this. Okay, I don't know. Now, now I, my, I got a white baby mama. I got, I got a lot of white friends, so I'm not a racist. But I'm going to be real with you. It gets to a point to where it's almost like white people use mental health as, an, as a scapegoat and an excuse. 
And I'm not saying that it's not a serious subject. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, when you black and you grew up in the hood, sometimes you might come home and the lights out. Right. Might not be no water. Mm -hmm. You might have to heat the water up in the microwave and put it in the damn tub. You might not have no hot water. You might have to peel shit outside. But guess what? Those are trials and tribulations that we go to and we learn how to succumb and get past at a young age. Mm -hmm. And this is the same thing that they consider mental health issues. You dig what I'm saying? Not saying that it's the proper way to handle them, but I believe our tribulations will make us triumph. That's true, but you got to think about it. A kid growing up, not thinking about his mental health issues because if that's all you know, unless you go over somebody else's house and see that they they don't go through what you go through, that's their normal. Exactly. You understand what I mean? Exactly. That's the and only time it, bu it bugs anybody when they realize that, oh, this isn't normal. Exactly. But I feel like subjects such as mental health are subjects for adults. Mm. Just like sexuality, I believe. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I don't believe, I believe anybody could be able to have, to be any sexuality they want to be, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe at the end of the day, like, sexuality is exactly that. The root word is what? Sex. Mm -hmm. So to be trying to say if a kid is this or that, at this or that age or whatever, you're, you're and so now that's pedophilia damn near mm -hmm. because now you're discussing sexuality with a child that hasn't yet even, don't even know sexually anything. matured right. yet. You dig what I'm saying? So, right. Because even teenagers, you know, they think they know it all, but they got some more life to live. We change our minds so many times as we get grow up to be adults all the time. Yeah. And you don't want to make life-changing um, things where you look back and like, man, I shouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't go back and change it because it costs too much to change and so, it. And let me say, it ain't just white people, people in general right now. Right now in 23, it's popular. that's the, that's it's the, the pop excuse. There it is. That's the excuse to just been going through some shit. And it's like, hey, man, everybody go through some shit. And everybody needs somebody to talk to, maybe to, you know, help them through some times. And it's like, um, you either going to do it the hard way or the easy way. People want to be victimized. People want to be the victim. They love playing the victim role a lot of times. I'm going to be honest with you. It's easy to sit in that saddle. Um, I'm being real. Like, uh, coming up, not having electricity uh, in my house, uh, not having a restroom with running water, having Facts. to go carry water to the house. Um, you, learn, uh, you learn to deal with life on a different That's level true. than yeah. others who have these certain things, these certain stigmas <clears throat> that they call mental illness. So Facts. I agree with you 100%. That's why I told them yeah. when you heard yeah. me talking, I, like, come I, and, on, and man. And I wanted to input, but that wasn't my business. So, but now yeah. we talk. Yeah, but, but it, it's the truth, but, though. But, but it's crazy, man, because at the end of the day, so for the people who really do have mental health issues. You do have you know, some real cases. I, I, I 1 million percent understand, you know, and I, and I you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm conscious of that, and I'm not being disrespectful in any way to those people. You know what I'm saying? I understand how it goes. I'm just really, I want people to understand that the power is right here. But I understand that, yes, you know, some people need to just tough it up. You know, um, it's life. Mm -hmm. But then, you got like you said, really but no, help. I understand that too. But I like how you said earlier that some people just need to find somebody to talk to. Yeah. Because you might not have any chemical imbalance in your head. But because of things that you've been holding on for years, it caused you to have all of these different traumatic relationship problems. Facts. You don't know Facts. how to deal with a woman. You don't Facts. know how to whatever. Abuse, but all kind of All sorts of shit. different stuff. So <clears throat> you need to talk to somebody. But then growing up back in the past, we be like, oh, tough it up. You're a wuss, this, 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 this. Yeah. So by people talking about mental illness, the way how they're, they are doing and saying that as a black community, it's okay to go to a counselor. It's okay to talk Correct. to somebody, whether it's a friend yeah. or it's a somebody older or whoever that just you look to up somebody. to, just talk to somebody, get it off your chest. Um, so many people go through things in life and be like, feel, and I guarantee you, this is almost everybody. Yeah. I'm the only one going through this. Yeah, they feel like that, but you're not. But you're not. Yeah, I'm not. I, I think I agree with you about it being. It, it all starts right here. I need. I ain't gonna lie. When I got a when my second baby mama is white. When I really got in a relationship with a white girl, I seen the difference. I was like, damn. Like if the, if it was the twenty seventh and we didn't have real money. I seen her have anxiety attacks and panic. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm just, I'm just, and I'm like, man, calm the fuck down. We finna get this relaxed. That's part of my boy. He coming. Uh, 
relax. We gonna get it. I never, I never, I've been, I've been used to that. Like the day before getting the rent money, or you know what I'm saying, a couple days late, whatever the fuck. I'm not panicking, but I actually seen that it was a real issue. I'm like, damn, people like this. Like I don't panic under pressure, but mm -hmm. obviously as people are, and for those people, I pray they get all the help they need. You know, but. Any, any, like my kids and stuff. I try to raise them to be strong mentally to the point to where we try to tame it. You know, we can't help everything. Some things are medical issues, like you were talking about. But does yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk.